This video is brought to you by Skillshare, an online learning community that offers thousands of inspiring and perfectly curated classes on multiple topics, including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing and more, and helps creative and curious people all over the world to explore new skills and to take next step in their creative journey. I will tell you more about the classes that I took on Skillshare later in this video, and now let's go and repaint some dolls. Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel! You know guys, lately I was working on my anglerfish mermaid doll and when I was covering her head light with glow-in-the-dark paint I suddenly realized that it's been really long time since we made the last glow-in-the-dark doll on this channel and actually I think I've made just two glow-in-the-dark dolls in total here on my YouTube and it's a pity because I really love this special glow-in-the-dark effect dolls with some glow-in-the-dark details they always look super special and absolutely phenomenal so you know you don't have to ask me twice I immediately went upstairs I grabbed this super special Monster High doll I think it's one of the most special Monster High dolls in the entire collection and I've got it by the way from one of you I know you probably recognize this doll now thank you so much now it's her time to get a makeover so and today we're going to turn her into a glow in the dark Octomate and you know Octomate it's like a mermaid but instead of being half girl half fish Octomates are half girls half octopus creatures actually this is already what this doll is half girl half octopus I really love her for arms so I think it's gonna be a very cool project I actually repainted this kind of a doll just once uh, she was my Capricorn doll in the Zodiac doll collection and I really love the end result of that makeover that doll is still one of my favorites ever so I'm actually really excited to work on this Monster High doll for the second time and especially yeah, to make her glow in the dark so guys, we are going to start working. Please, like always, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Please hit the bell button to get notified about my new Dory Paint videos on this channel. And of course, support my art here on YouTube with your likes. And we are going to start working. So, we will start, like always, with removing her outfit and cutting her hair. Well, you know my regular preparation routine. You've seen it many times on my channel and these steps, they stay kind of the same every time I work on a doll. I use, like always, my hair dryer to make your head soft to be able to disconnect it from the body. And then I pull out the rest of the short hair from the inside of her head using my tweezers. And then the next step is removing her face with pure acetone. Okay, now I want to give her this pretty glow-in-the-dark hair. I've used this type of hair once on a doll and it looked really, really pretty. So let's do it again, let's use it again. And first of all, I want to cover her head first with a couple of layers of white acrylics. And then on top of it, I will apply glow-in-the-dark paint. So 
So this is what I've got. Let's check the glow. Yep, the glow is here. Very good. So now I can take my rerouting tool and I can insert tiny strands of new hair into the holes on her head. And this is it. This is her new hair a couple of hours later. It looks really good. The color is really gorgeous. So now we can add some glue inside of the head and we will let it dry for a day. So and while the glue is drying, I can actually sand the top of the body with nail buffers to remove this glossy surface from the top, preparing it for being covered with acrylics, because this is what I'm going to do next. I'm going to spray the head and the body with light nude acrylics when the glue gets dry. So I'm applying a couple of layers of acrylics, then we will follow up with a couple of layers with Mr. Super Clear that will make the surface matte and quite paper-like and I will be able to draw a new face for this doll using watercolor pencils and soft pastels. I start with sketching her eyes and then I will apply a couple of layers of soft pastels trying to make her skin tone more alive and less kind of flat than it is now. When I'm happy with the skin tone, I start working on her eyeshadows and I want to give her some super bright, colorful green eyeshadows. Why not? I'm quite into colorful makeup right now. And for my dolls and for myself, but mostly for my dolls, of course. So let's give her green, bright, colorful eye look. And for the rest, you know, the main steps are staying quite the same all the time. Applying some shadows, then some highlights, then some accents, then more shadows, then more highlights, and so on. This is it. This is the routine.
Okay, now let's do the same to her body. Seal it with Mr. Super Clear, blush it with soft pastels. And you know it's not really difficult today since the main skin tone is already there. We've applied it with acrylics. Okay, the face and the body are finished for now, I will still add some details later, but right now I want to protect the finished top of the body with some plastic and then we can start working on the bottom part of it. So first of all I want to give our girl four more legs, because I think she should have more legs on the bottom, she's supposed to have eight legs I think, no? doesn't matter so anyway we're going to make four more legs and I'm going to sculpt them using this glow-in-the-dark clay I've bought six packs of them so we can let ourselves go and I'm starting with sculpting some long tentacles out of it So here they are, my beautiful tentacles, one of the prettiest things I've ever sculpted, really beautiful. So now I'm going to shape them similar to the tentacles on the original doll and then we will bake them for 30 minutes in the oven. So guys, check it out, here are our tentacle cookies, I really love them, they look absolutely fantastic, so now I think I can attach them to the doll's body using sticky warbler thermoplastic because it's really good at gluing things together. Okay, this is the finished construction, looks very good, so now we can start actually painting it. And first of all I will cover the original tentacles and the rest of the tail, first with white and then with glow-in-the-dark acrylics. The pink things I will not touch because they already glow in the dark. So, and after this, I don't know, we will see what we will do because there are still different options. So here it is, everything looks and glows beautifully, so now we can continue painting the doll, but this is actually not an easy task at all, because just one layer of regular paint would instantly kill the glow in the dark effect. Look, I've experimented here with different kinds of paint and toppers, you can see the extreme glitter, the iridescent paints in different shades, I've mixed regular paint with glow-in-the-dark paint in different proportions, and now you can see the result. You can see that all these glittery and iridescent toppers, they don't really damage the glowy effect, you cannot really see it here, you cannot see the difference. 
while even the tiniest amount of acrylic really reduces the effect absolutely dramatically. So I think I would stick to these see-through toppers, to the glitter and to these iridescent paints, and maybe this light green is still usable. It glows kinda, more or less. So, and now knowing all the results of my research, I'm going to paint all the eight legs of the doll. So guys, this is where I've ended up, I can tell you honestly it was quite challenging to bring some color and shine to the legs and keep them glowing in the dark at the same time, but it all worked quite good I think and it's still glowing like it should. So now I think we can move on to the other parts of the body and first of all I want to spray her body and her face with a thin layer of this blue iridescent paint. Her tail I want to decorate with sequins, I still have some of them left after making my Antarctic mermaid doll, so I want to use them on this doll because it gives a very very pretty effect. So you can see it finished now, it looks absolutely gorgeous, this shine is just stunning, I really love the effect. And look by the way how pretty it looks in the dark, how this glow in the dark coming through the holes in the sequence, really beautiful magic, I'm very happy with the result. So now I still want to paint these things on her body, these dots and these lines, I want them to glow in the dark as well. For the fins I wanted to try something new, so I covered them first with this leafing size medium. It leaves a super sticky coat to which I will apply a thin layer of pearl sand powder and then I will cover it all with glossy varnish. Ok, now we can finally move on, because I was working on this body for 4 days non-stop. It's time to make something else, I think. Let's start probably with making a top. And for this I'm going to use this silicone mold. I'm planning to make these seashells. And first of all I'm covering them with a layer of the same pearl sand powder like we've just used on the fins. And then I'm filling them in with UV resin.
To the biggest shell I add a piece of this iridescent foil and then we can cure it in the UV lamp. So we've got some cute seashells and now I want to connect them together using the same resin. Okay, the shells are finished, now let's take a piece of see-through warbler thermoplastic and a piece of the same iridescent foil and I want kind of to encapsulate this foil inside of the thermoplastic. By the way, I found another doll like this in my stock, so I can shape the thermoplastic around her body and this is good because her body is slightly bigger than the regular Monster High body. And now we're going to glue the seashells to this thing that we've just made. Okay, beautiful, the top is finished and now I want to make something else. I want to make a mini octopus that could be a friend to our doll, as well as be used as her hair decoration or some sort of a hat. So I start with sculpting him out of our glow-in-the-dark clay. Well, and while we are busy sculpting this little guy, please let me tell you more about the sponsor of this episode, Skillshare, and about the new things that I've learned lately on this platform. If you remember the last time I've learned the basics of using animation in Procreate, and I figured out how to add motion to my own drawings, and this time I've decided to continue experimenting with Procreate, and I took a class on marbling. It's called Digital Marbling, Create Stunning Abstract Art, and procreate by Rich Armstrong and oh my god guys it was so much fun again well I knew already how to use a liquify tool but I never really thought about using it to create beautiful abstract pieces of art that, that would look exactly like some paper marbling or color pouring but without making actual mess with real paint but what is the most important, the process of digital marbling appeared to be extremely calming and I would even call it therapeutic because you don't even need an apple pencil for it. Just throw some paint on your canvas and then liquefy it with your finger and it feels super satisfying, really not normal. And you don't really need to have basic skills to do it, literally anyone can digital marble like a pro while chilling on the sofa in the evening. So here are my first results of this beautiful art therapy and I'm sure I will go back to this technique again in the future and even like in the very near future like tonight for example because it's really easy and extremely relaxing and satisfying. Really feels like art therapy. So I could really recommend this technique to anyone. By the way, Skillshare Premium Membership costs less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, but you can try it for free right now and decide later if you want to continue with it. So in the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description box under this video, we'll get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership so you can explore your creativity. Well, thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring this video and thank you so much Skillshare also for keeping us creative and I will go back to my Octobait.
Okay, I think we're done with sculpting, so now let's try to shape the legs in some cute way. So guys, and now let us pray that it all stays like this after we bake it in the oven and nothing melts down. I don't know, I'm really stressed about it. And good news guys, our friend looks fantastic. I didn't really expect it. I was expecting something to melt or to, I don't know, misform. But he looks really good, he glows beautifully and he's ready to be painted. So here I'm going to do quite the same thing like I've just done painting her legs, combining all these colors that don't affect the glow in the dark thing. So and here is our little guy, he looks super cute, I still have to give him some eyes and then we'll think how to make him sit on her head, because look, if we attach a headband or some, I don't know, pin or something like this to the bottom of it, it would be very difficult to use this octopus as a friend, it would be just a headband, it would be just a head decoration, but you know, I have an idea. Lately, I've accidentally broken one of these doll stands and I was quite sad about it. But you know, there is nothing accidental in our business because this thing here can work as a perfect removable headband. We will now make a hole on the bottom of our octopus and when we want to let him rest on our doll's head, we will just attach the headband and she can wear him on her head. But when he wants to go on his own, we can disconnect the holder and he's free to go or to be used, I don't know, as a friend or something like this. So, what a beautiful solution for a problem that might seem insignificant for the most of the people, but you know, it makes me really, really happy because I was thinking about it for a while, how to combine these two functions, how to make him sit on her head and at the same time be used not just as a head decoration. Okay, we are done with the octopus and now I still want to add something to her body. Look, I have here this chain and a bunch of glow-in-the-dark beads. They come from some kids craft set and just this see-through are glow-in-the-dark. So let's put them on the chain and then we will wrap the chain around her neck and also around her waistline. And guys, this is what we've got, and now I think all the glow-in-the-dark elements are on their places. And now we can finally style her hair. I want to give her lots of curls, my goal is to make huge mane of hair today. And I will need a barbecue stick and a hot hair straightener for it.
check it out guys this is where I've ended up with her hair it looks really cool I think so now let's attach the false lashes add glossy varnish to her eyes and lips and then we will be able to take a look at the end result pictures So guys, here is finally the glowiest doll ever. It was quite challenging, I can tell you honestly, because I was really limited in the variety of medias and paints that I could use, because 99% of them would completely cancel the glow-in-the-dark effect. But I'm actually really happy with the end result. She really glows in the daylight as well as in the dark, but of course at night it looks extremely special and truly magical. And you know I'm staying a huge fan of the glow-in-the-dark effect after making this doll. And I also love the fact, by the way, that she has four arms. It makes her much more expressive and cool looking. I don't know, they should make more dolls with four arms and four legs and things like this because it really kind of benefits the character of the doll. So, and as you could see earlier, I've got another doll like this, so we can make another Octomate doll in the future. So if you have any bright ideas about who this doll could become, please let them like always in the comments under this video. So, and if you need some glow-in-the-dark doll in your life, please check out the link in the description box under this video. She is available for sale on eBay for three days right now, so please check it out, maybe this one is yours. So that was my doll transformation of the week, guys. I really hope you've enjoyed it today. And if so, please don't forget to support my art here on YouTube with your likes. Of course, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell button, and I will see you ready very soon, normally in two weeks on Friday, in my new doll repaint video. So please have a nice weekend, guys. Love you. Bye.